a new dimension is emerging in the way some Nigerians are choosing to express their dissatisfaction with some socio-political issues. Since the conclusion of the 2015 general elections, the number of professed long-distance trekkers has increased by one, as one Haruna Salisu claimed to have spent about two weeks trekking from Kano State to Abuja. Now, Mr. Salisu told journalists that his mission is to register his protest against what he believed to be electoral fraud in a just-concluded governorship election in Taraba State. The 2015 general elections have come and gone, but the intriguing stories about people who trekked long distances to honor their candidates is a new development in the history of Nigerian politics. First, it was one Mr. Suleiman Hashimu who claimed to have trekked from Lagos to Abuja to congratulate the president-elect. This did not only attract several questions and comments from the general public as to the authenticity of his claims, but it has also attracted more trekkers onto the scene. Mr. Haruna Salisu, a student of Bayero University in Kanu State, appears to be the latest in the list of trekkers. Unlike others, however, he says that his work is a protest against alleged fraud in the just-concluded Taraba State governorship elections. Taraba is just a trigger, but women discrimination generally is a pandemic in Nigeria that has bedeviled the existence of men for so long. And it's high time any sensible man should say no to that. That is why I took it upon myself, despite all the risks, to trek down from Kano down to Abuja to register my protest generally on gender discrimination in Nigeria. It's high time we say no to it. That is the philosophy behind my protest. The first thing I hope to achieve is that let the world know what happened in Taraba was an outright rigging. We have a lot of evidence to show that what happened in Taraba, of course, was, was, was an outright rigging. There are, in, in so many local governments in Taraba state, elections did not even hold. His host, members of the All Progressive Congress Young Women Forum, also believe that their candidate was rigged out of the Taraba governorship elections. We saw the pattern of the election and we saw how results were being announced and how she was, she was almost declared winner and then at the end of the day we just heard that some things changed. So we're, we're asking the government and the judiciary and whatever it is that is being done to actually let them look into it and make sure they bring out the truth and let justice be served. She has already contested and it is boldly written, it is boldly known that actually she won the election. And what we are actually asking for right now is that our mandates be given back to her. If you look at her, Aja Aisha Jumai Al Hassan, she has really, really, she has, a, she has taken a very bold step. Whether these claims of long distance solidarity treks to Abuja are true or not, it is difficult to verify. One thing that is sure, however, is the fact that this development is new in the history of politics in Nigeria. Uh, well, if you call the year 2015 as the year of trekkers, you just wouldn't be wrong on that. Well, the AKT chapter of the Nigerian Medical Association has declared an indefinite strike to protest the kidnap of a former chief medical director of AKT State University Teaching Hospital, Dr. Patrick Adegun, and a nurse with the Federal Teaching Hospital, Idu Ekiti, Mrs. Margaret Aladineka. The NMA says that it is disturbed by the serial kidnap of the health workers in the state. Dr. Adegun and his wife were kidnapped at about 8 p.m. near the residence at Okeila in the state capital on Thursday. Unless resources are managed judiciously, development cannot be sustained. This is according to Governor Ibrahim Shema of Katsina State at an interactive session in Lagos today. Governor Shema stresses the importance of building sustainable institutions and fostering growth with available resources and tasks other state governments of borrowing a leave from Katsina State, which has remained debt-free since the beginning of his administration in 2007. He goes ahead to describe Nigeria as a young democracy, but says that there is room for improvement. Whatever I can do to support and assist you know, the growth and development of this nation through my party, the PDP, uh, as an individual, I will do that. As a party man, I will do that. As a former governor, I will do that. So I will do everything I can. The idea is to have a stable system. We need a stable polity. You see, Nigerians sometimes make a big mistake. 
are both in whatever party you belong. We think we can just make democracy as good as what we have in America. That's over 250 year democracy. How do you now equate a 250 year democracy with 16 year old democracy? Of course we are learning. And as we learn uh, through the process, we can make, uh, we can stumble and, and rise up and, and move on and do whatever we can. When I came into office, I was very clear in my head that unless you manage your resources and manage them well, there is no way you can succeed in providing dividends of democracy to people. Number one, to borrow money in Nigerian economy today at cutthroat interest rates will no doubt put your state in a pedestal of high debt. The interest rate will be between 40 or more percentage of whatever you borrow. And as you borrow, you have no guarantee that the economy will sustain your activities. So I didn't want to go borrowing. What I first decided to do is to spend according to my income. And we had a system of budgeting that capital projects must capture 70% of our budget. The current will only take a maximum of 30%. We back that up with the law. That no expenditure should go beyond, capital expenditure should, should go less than 70%. And no recurrent expenditure should go more than 30 years. The Niger Delta Development Commission has been speaking on its efforts in helping to reduce youth restiveness in the Niger Delta. The managing director of the NDDC, Basse Dan Abia, was speaking during a special Holy Communion service at Afaha in Esereket, local government area of Akwaibum State. At the event, the prelate of the Methodist Church in Nigeria, Dr. Samuel Uche, urged the newly elected public office holders to address the issues of youth restiveness and corruption. This Holy Communion service is to officially dedicate this church building, partly donated by the Managing Director of the Niger Delta Development Commission, NDDC, Basid Dan Abia, to his community, Afaha, in Esit Eket, local government area of Akwaibom State. The service is common with a reminder of the enabling work of Christ in the human vessel. This, clerics believe, has so far helped the leadership of the NDDC to deliver results on its mandate. A priest is a child without Christ. You need Christ into your system to become a living being. You need Christ in your system to impact society. Many of the members, pastors, the great DND of many years, BSC, HND, are roaming about the streets, no job. And that's why there is much pride. And I want to advise those that are going to see that and House of Representatives to cut their allowances by half. Even if we have himself, we should cut his own salary. Oh yes, the ministers should call their salary. If they call it, we have enough to do now. The NDDC Managing Director expresses his fulfillment with every contribution he has made to the development of the region. Apart from the tangible development, the infrastructure, we are forgetting so soon the level of restiveness within Niger Delta. Where do you think all the militants, the people that were kidnapping whites, or did they finish with the white public kidnapping, even their villagers, kidnapping school children, they are still alive, many of them. NDC has a program of engaging most of these people in addition to the general amnesty program. The highlights of the service include prayers for the NDDC boss and his management staff and fundraising for another church project. Now speaking to investors who are willing to do business in Ogun State, they say they are now to enjoy favorable policies, security and conducive environment. That is according to the State Commissioner for Commerce and Industry, Mr. Bimbo Asheru, who made these promise that 
Ibiza during a working visit to a sodium silicate, silicate uh, manufacturing company being facilitated by the state government. The commissioner also disclosed that the government is making effort towards increasing the state internally generated revenue to about 10 billion naira monthly. Um, I'm happy to tell you that um, this, if this one is commissioned, it will be the 59th company that will be commissioned in Ogun State. And we have seven more to be commissioned. Uh, we pray that um, by the time the president-elect is um, being sworn in, the first industry to be commissioned in Nigeria will be in Ogun State. And the, the, the industries are already waiting. In 2012, about one trillion USD came into Nigeria. And I'm happy to tell you that um, in Ogun State, over 10 billion US dollars have been invested in Ogun State in the last 40 months. So that shows that um, the FDI is really working in, in Ogun State because um, we have so many multinationals in Ogun State. And um, presently, we have over 370 industries in Ogun State. And 60% um, of those industries are multinationals. So they've been able to inflow a lot of foreign exchange to state. And that is why we could see what is happening to our IGR from 700 million, is, we are hovering between four and five billion every month. And uh, by God's grace, our target, even the governor once is sworn in um, for the second term, I'm sure the target will be almost 10 billion naira on a monthly basis. Hello and welcome to Business News. The chief executive of the National Association of Securities Dealers over-the-counter market, also called the NASDOTC, has said that it will soon commence the process of information gathering from listed securities on the platform. Ajo Malay stated this at a meeting with stockbrokers in Lagos, where the market operators had raised concerns over the difficulty of transacting with, um, with some of the companies for lack of access to their financial reports. Responding to the concern, Ajo Mali reveals plans to commence the classification of companies according to their information declaration. Plans are uh, expanding from research and development, it's corporate governance in so many directions. There, there we do recognize, and we have from the time we started, recognized that there is a big gap in information. Um, it's not well presented to the market, it's not even available most of the time that we want it to be. For us at our end, what we're going to do first of all is we're going to uh, classify companies according to how they present the information. If they present the information well, then we'll classify them as a blue company. If they present the information but it's not enough or we are not satisfied with the information or there's some caveat on the information, we'll present them as a pink company, which means that they're slightly higher risk. And if we find that the information is actually wrong about the company or we find that the information is clearly short, so if a company has not published its accounts in two years, then really you don't know where the company is anymore. Um, you'll be guessing, it'll be guesswork really that will lead you through the company. For those kind of companies, we'll classify them as a red, which means a buyer beware. We have not started that classification yet, but I believe that that's the next step in our evolution as we move along um, building this company. In the meantime, the equities market closed in the negative territory this week following series of declines in prices of defensive stocks throughout the five sessions of the week. Most investors made exits from the market as insignificant bargain sentiment was noticed on low-cap stocks. The key benchmark indices depreciated by 0.92%, with a market capitalization of 11.67 trillion naira. During the week, 32 equities recorded price appreciation, while 45 made declines. Unity Bank was the worst hit with a loss of 32.65%, and is followed by Learn Africa and ABC with a 9 naira 52% fall. On the other hand, Vitafoam had the major boost in share price by 32.51% after gaining 1 naira 57 cover. CNI leasing pulled 14 cover during the week as Red Star Express came next. UBA, Transcorp and Access Bank were the top three most traded stocks of the week. In all, a total of 1.58 billion shares valued at 20.15 billion naira were traded in 23,279 deals. And following series of profit takings last week at the bond market, 
Demands returned during the week as average yield fell by six basis points week on week to 14.68 percent. Trading within the week turned bullish with the first three session close, leading average yields to drop to a week low of 14.58 percent. The bears, however, returned on Thursday and Friday as average yield added 10 basis points to close the week at 14.68 percent. The secondary bond market is expected to experience lull next week as investors await the primary auction where the debt management office will offer more bonds in reopenings. And in the crude oil market, prices settled higher as U.S. crude closed up 45 cents at $59.39 a barrel. Brent, on the other hand, closed down 15 cents at $65.39 per barrel after hitting a session high of $66.01 a barrel. Oil prices already tumbled 3% on Thursday as resurgent dollar erased gains from the past two sessions. Well, that's it on business news at this time. I'm Emana Amawe. So I will be back with the rest of the news on today. Well, still ahead on the news, Burnley relegated from the English Premier League as Nigeria International Victor Anichebe helps West Brom stay in the top flight. That's on sports news. Stay with us. Thank you.